I know all my viewers in the Netherlands, the nether regions. Um, open it carefully. Contains face palm oh, material, apparently. So open carefully. Open very, very carefully. I'm being careful. Oh, yes! Yes! What a way to cap off the year. Thank you very much. Um, this is a piece of... This is a piece... Hello, Dave. This is the piece of the Solar Road in the Netherlands. Yes! I have a piece of solar... Well, it's not solar freaking roadways, but it's solar roads in the Netherlands. Um, and this is the top glass material. I think, he, I, think I retweeted his uh, video of it. And, uh, <laughs> like, it, it was just peeling off. And this was what covers... This is, like, the resin material that covers it with the, it's got the gritty surface you know because it was like a a road slash it was a road was it is this a road was a road or a bike path can't, can't remember there's so many bloody solar roadways unbelievable um <laughs> thank you very much patch after patch after patch it's not a bloody solar roadway it's a bloody patchway great think you can look through this get some energy through the sun Yes or no? It's a real success. They call this a success. The DNO is a scientific organization. They call this a success. Now you can now it finally makes some real energy because now you can see the solar panels. So I'm actually helping the solar rod. So thank you very much for sending this in and also uh, getting that video of this boondoggle and here it is. Now this is actually a strip from uh, the Cremini, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the Cremini installation in the Netherlands. They've got like half a dozen different installations but this is the original installation of the uh, solar bike path at uh, Cremini that I did a video on uh, like way back and I did like the test results from. It's a 90 meter strip by 1.7 meters um, and that was in 2014 believe it or not and I think it was redone in 2016 because it just got buggered up but um, anyway yeah this is like uh, <laughs> look at that oh, come on so it looks like it has like a base uh, thickness of just under uh, three millimeters there and it's got the you know extra rough uh, surface so like over five millimeters with this extra rough surface on top yeah it looks like it's actually done in like two separate layers there so that's what it looks on uh, side on you can see that extra layer being put on top there and it's I don't know what material it is some sort of poly put the kettle on uh, polymer type thing but to think that this is going to like do the business to protect a solar panel and also <laughs> have like a transmit good transmissive properties are oh, you you're just kidding yourself this is a joke and this is the sort of transmissive property you can expect from this um it's, it's not good <laughs> well it's just it's terrible muriel i mean come on seriously this? You want to put this on top of your solar panels? I know it's been out there for a while, but even new. It's, it's a joke. So we have it like that, much brighter, and, you know, come on. Come on. <laughs> Got that one down in the bottom corner. That's better. Look at that little chunk down. If it doesn't have the rough stuff on top, that's interesting. Look, the rough stuff is is really um like well you know you don't know until you do the actual measurement on it but that looks uh, much more transmissive than the than the roughed up part of it so yeah but you'd expect that see the difference in the two layers there anyway let's uh put this puppy over a solar cell and uh, you know, just get some uh, have some fun just get some basic measurements to see how much it drops the output <laughs> All right, I'm going to try two different types of uh, solar cell because these are the only ones I have that actually um, match the size of this so that I can fully cover the cell because you don't want it like partially uh, covered. So this one, I have full data on. This is actually a Panasonic uh, AM1454 and this is an indoor amorphous 
uh, solar cell. And we got the full data sheet and graph and everything um, for it. But I don't necessarily expect this one to perform very well because it's designed for indoor use, like for a couple of hundred lux and things like that. I think it says like a maximum of a thousand lux or something. But I thought we'd give it a go anyway, even though we expect like tens of thousands of lux um, outside. So anyway, and this one I had in my drawer. I got a bunch of these. I That website doesn't exist anymore. I can't find any info on this. I have no idea what it is. Um, it doesn't look like it's an amorphous one. So let's just say it's a crappy one hung low brand, uh, you know, <laughs> a silicon um, solar cell, you know, not hugely efficient. But anyway, that'll give us a representation. So let's try and measure the short circuit current of both of these um, under various lighting conditions, including outdoors with and without this and the short so i'm not going to try and find the maximum power point and all that sort of stuff the short circuit current should give us just a good relative measurement when we actually uh cover it and not cover it all right i'm going to use my amarand uh 672 studio light here i've got two of these i usually use these for uh, shooting the video there we go i just put them either side as well as uh, my above head studio light so i'll use this and and we're currently getting about 8,800 uh, lux here because we're in times 10 mode on here. So we're going to multiply that by 10. And there's our short circuit current. We're getting about 1.165 milliamps. Now let's put our fabulous solar road surface on top. And wow, look at that. That's dropped by about half. I, d I expect better outdoors, I, th I suspect. But yeah, because it shouldn't be that bad. But that that's really bad. Wow, that's like a, or, you know, roughly a 50% drop. Okay, exact same conditions for this uh, random brand <laughs> solar cell here. Uh, 5.85 milliamps. Let's see. Oh, oh, well, oh, there we go. It gets more as I put my hand under. There you go. It must be, ah, it must be reflecting off my hand. So 5.85 milliamps. And it... Jump back to 1.52. Wow, that's a huge drop. That's more than the other one. So let's go outside and try the same test again in the full midday sun. Ooh, goody. I get to leave the lab. Okay, here we are out in the midday sun, or what's left of it because of the uh, fires, um, uh, well, up in the mountains, actually. If you don't know, Sydney is like a 50-kilometre uh, diameter uh, basin, and it's collecting all the smoke from all the fires up and down the coast and up in the mountains. So, yeah, it's everything up there is totally rooted. It's not good. Um, anyway, so we're getting uh, about 89,000. Uh, Lux here because you've got to wear on times 100 mode now So, you know roughly like nine times what we were getting in the lab and we've got the short circuit current there 123 milliamps, so let's go cover this with our Magical maybe we've got some you know the Sun's got some magical, you know insulation. That's not insulation. That's insulation Insulation that's a radiation from the Sun. Anyway, let's have a look don't put my head over it, 122 milliamps, and wah, 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 Four, whoa, oh, that was my head, um, 39.8 milliamps, that is a massive, massive drop, 40 milliamps, wow, didn't expect that bad. Now, I do, as I suspected, I don't think our uh, amorphous solar cell is kind of, it's not designed for outdoors, you can see it's only 1.5 odd milliamps and that's just like 50% more than what we're getting in the lab even though we're getting nine times uh, the insulation out here so it's kind of like saturated or whatever I, I you know I don't know the details of amorphous um, solar cells outside but it's clearly um, it's short circuit current is just yeah it's not doing the business so let's put that over and there we go that didn't drop much did it but because it's saturated or whatever, it's not the correct term, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, that hasn't dropped. Oh, that hasn't dropped much at all. That's dropped bugger all. So yeah, nah, that's not really a good test. The other one's the go. So there you have it. We measured roughly a 33% output or a 66% drop due to putting this thing on top of our solar cell. And well, is that very surprising? No, it's not. And if we take a look at, it's much worse than I expected though. Um, let's take a look at their official test results document for the uh, Cremini uh, experiment. 
this um, pathway here. Now, this is translated um, from the Dutch, so I don't know how accurate the uh, uh, translation is here. Now, they were talking about, there's two versions of this. The first one was 70 uh, kilowatt hours, or an output we expected energy between 50 and 70 kilowatt hours per year, but they provided 73. So it was better than they expected. Kilowatt hours per square meter per year. That's just like averaged over the uh, year of operation. And the second version, they claim that they got 93 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. But down here, the operating efficiency of the flexible cells is still lower. It was also evident that the measured yield of about 41 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. However, this will still rise in the coming years. So uh, what is it for? Is it 93 or is it 41? 41 kilowatt hours is matches our results here. So um, like as in a 66% drop roughly, like only a one third output. It can't be that bad, can it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I figured it out. They're talking about, they apparently, I think they must have fitted in a couple of test panels or something. The thin film ones uh, were fitted. Uh, they were they were better suited to roads than the brittle silicon cells, which have been applied in the rest of the cycle path. So I assume they must have like upgraded a couple and did a test, but the output of those was 41 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. But yeah, anyway, so um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is. Obviously, like this has been degraded over time and stuff like that. So probably the performance was better when it was uh, first installed, but it has been there for several years, uh, presumably. And it's, it yeah, maybe it just really grossly deteriorates. But, and of course it depends on the insulation and the uh, type of cell and, and lots of variables. So you know, our simple test here with our uh, polycrystalline cell with this, um, yeah, it, it could be way off, but that, that's what we got. This is what happens when you put something on top of a solar panel. It's ridiculous. The whole concept is totally retarded. I've said this a dozen times now to take an already existing marginal payback technology and put it in the most unoptimum configuration, which is flat, and then to put this stuff on top of it in order to protect it, that just attenuates it even further. And then you drive bikes and cars on top of it, it gets grimed up and banged up and I like grit and all sorts of crap in here. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Not to mention that they're like embedded in the ground. They're probably just going to heat up to buggery. Whereas at least like angled solar panels, it can at least get some airflow underneath and stuff like that. It's just dumb. It's the dumbest idea in history. How many times do we have to say it? Oh, but they laughed at the Wright brothers. <laughs> yeah, they also laughed at Bozo the Clown. And if you have a look at my old video here, 743, where I looked at the uh, initial test results for Solar Road uh, NL, and uh, and I compared them to uh, like f three different nearby ins rooftop installations that I got real data from rooftop installations, and then I uh, averaged everything out per square meter, and the rooftop solar was twice the output. There's just no way to spin it twice the output. So that's a combination of both this ridiculous uh, stuff on top attenuating the light and also the fact that they're non-optimum flat as well. There's just no getting around that. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. <laughs> It doesn't work. Anyway, it was very cool to actually get a piece of this and actually do a few simple tests. And as I said, it's probably worse than I expected. But uh, yeah, don't take those results. We're just doing this for a bit of uh, fun. But like even lo looking at the real results here, it's like, no. <laughs> Solar roads is a joke. Yet how many installations have they got in the Netherlands? Like five or something? And they've all failed. Every single one of them. Unbelievable. When will they learn? So hopefully 2020 or the 20s can finally see the end of the solar roadways concept because it's just an absolute joke. It's just, come on, please. But it wouldn't surprise me if they keep flogging this dead horse and riding this donkey all the way into town because there's always, you know, greeny political points to be had by doing this sort of BS. But anyway, 
let us know what you think in the comments down below. As always, if you like the video, please give it a big a thumbs up. And remember, if you're after a decentralized alternative uh, to YouTube that everyone's been talking about uh, for the last couple of years, then it exists over on library.tv. I'll link in my channel down below. It's growing. Um, as of making this, I've got like almost 19, uh, 1,800, 1,900 subscribers, something like that. So it's going gangbusters. So I'll link it in down below. It really does work. It's pretty cool. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.